Uh, you're welcome back. Um, we are being joined by Mr. S. Anya, a public affairs analyst, and we'll be looking at the vision of the presidential debates by some presidential candidates. And we also will look a little bit about the newly uh, printed money, <laughs> <laughs> new Naira notes that, are, that have been introduced into the, into the society. Uh, Mr. Anya, welcome to the run-up. I don't think Mr. Anya has joined oh, us yet. Mr. Anya is nowhere to be found for now. Okay, uh, until he joins us, this debate will continue and we'll keep talking about it all mm -hmm. the time. Um, Bio, you're, you're there and the discussion is on people who want employment evading an interview as it is. I don't know how you personally feel about that, Bio. Uh, well, the, for me, to be honest, it's worrisome. It's worrisome because um, since the return to the democratic rule in 1999, I don't think we've had a scenario like this, you know, where if you like what might be described as the front runners uh, are avoiding scrutiny because that's what it suggests. Um, and uh, even though legally they are not obliged to be part of this, but it, it's, it's something which has become a tradition, and not only in Nigeria, but in all democratic environments. So, um, like we said the other day, if you come into a presidential debate, then you get asked questions. If you are in a campaign, rather, Nobody asks you any questions. Mm -hmm. So campaign rallies are choreographed while presidential debates are not. And this is for me where I think those who manage uh, our presidential candidates have to uh, impress it on them, the importance of appearing before or at a presidential uh, 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 debates. Otherwise, there might be few in suggestions that there's something to hide. But the question is, is it really the presidential candidates that are running away or the minders, the people who are in charge that are making sure that they don't attend because maybe there are some things that they are hiding? These same people that should impress upon them to come might even be the ones that are preventing them from coming. Is it not possible? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... It's possible, uh, it's possible, and that, if that is the scenario or the situation, then it's unfortunate because part of your job as um, a, pub a manager of public information, you know, on behalf of a candidate or your principal, is to prepare your principal for such tasks. There is no candidate that is 100%, uh, that gives 100% performance in a presidential debate. Yeah. There is no candidate. And I think this is why you have a series of presidential debates, so that you can always use the very next one to improve on your conduct in the previous one. And we see this in the U.S., uh, because the U.S. exemplifies, uh, you know, this whole tradition of presidential debates, of governorship debates. If you don't do too well now, the very next one, you polish, you are polished up, you're better prepared, and you go there to improve. You know, but not appearing at all then suggests that those minders are either not doing their job properly or don't even know how to do their jobs, you know, and therefore would want to prevent their candidates from appearing. And then I, I think it speaks of, you know, the personality of the people that we are dealing with. I mean, how do you... Uh, ignore the call of the people that you hope to lead, uh, the call of the people that you you know, intend to serve because that is how I choose to mm -hmm. see it. I mean, you're coming into uh, an office. Uh, it, it, it generally, I'd, I think it's disrespectful, honestly, mm -hmm. to both the people, the organizers, the people who are at home hoping to watch, people who are sending in questions. It is very disrespectful and it shouldn't be encouraged. It's not something that should. In fact, I put up a video on one of my social media handles and people kept, you know, answering the question because I asked, do you think that it should be made mandatory for people seeking political offices at whatever level to be made 
you know, made it to, for it to be made mandatory for them to attend uh, these debates. And everybody, I was getting yeses from different angles and different levels. Because, I mean, how else are you going to, uh, you know, we are not mind readers. We don't know what you have in mind. You might as well, just like Bayer said, come to your rally grounds and say whatever it is you think we want to hear mm -hmm. and move on. But, you know, when we get to the chance to be able to ask these questions, the way it's burning in our minds, it makes a difference. And, you know, there is something about close contact when you're standing there and we are close and we're firing you those <laughs> questions. Actually, there are so many things we are looking at apart from whatever answers that you give. You, you go. Know? You go to an. Mm -hmm. You go for an interview, and they ask you, "Can you work um, under pressure?" <laughs> this is our own pressure. We want to give you and <laughs> Actually, ask you the questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you cannot stand before us and answer the questions, how then can we hold you accountable if you if you do wrong in office? That means now that you're begging us, you can't come to us. It means that the time that you get there, you are the Lord and 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 every the be all. And we cannot ask you any question. You can do whatever you like. Because if you can do whatever you like now, mm -hmm. then when you get there, you will turn to a tiger or something. Our so guest is here, finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should. And you know, um, Uche and Yambu, you see, it's not only that during these presidential debates, um, we get to ask questions. There is all, it's also a good forum for interaction mm -hmm. between the, the citizens and the candidates. And I give an example of this. I mean, sorry, the, 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 the candidates can also learn. There are a lot of things that they get to know. For example, uh, I think the last presidential debate, um, there was the, the president of the Center for Citizens with Disability, if I remember correctly, CCD, David Anyele. David was, was in that uh, as part of the audience. And he asked President Buhari a question about uh, uh, passing the bill to allow persons with disability to vote in elections, okay? And that the National Assembly had finished the, the, the process and they understood that the bill was, was supposed to have been sent to the president, you know? And I think the president said that he wasn't really aware if the bill had come to him. But guess what? Two weeks later, the president signed that bill into law, mm. okay? That happened during that presidential debate. I remember very, very well because I was monitoring that bill and that issue as well. So these presidential debates are a very good opportunity for the candidates themselves to learn, to hear, and to know maybe there's something they ought to have done or we're expecting them to do mm -hmm. that they may not even be aware of. Yeah. You know? But when you go to a rally, a rally is just a jamboree. I'm sorry to use that word. <laughs> People are dancing, it's a mm -hmm. carnival and everything. And it's mainly party supporters who are there. You know, and they are not asking, of course, anybody. Else. Okay, Mr. Anya, I think Mr. Anya has joined us. Mr. Anya, are you there? Hey, good morning. Yeah, uh, sorry that we couldn't Hello. connect the first time. Yeah, you, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you. But you people have been discussing there, and there was no question directed to me. Yes, yes, we couldn't hear you at first, so we were waiting for your audio to be better now that you're here um you must have heard us talking but let's ha get your perspective some uh, presidential aspirants are running away from the okay well they are not attending debates let me not say they're running yes. away uh, give them the benefit of the doubt so what do you think uh, about that and what do you think is the place of debates presidential debates in an election like that of nigeria well uh, all over the world uh, if you want to say yourself as a a, a candidate in any facet of a elective position, either as a, a governor, presidential, local government chairman, the best place to assert yourself free of charges through debates. Because you are not going to pay for airtime, you are going to be invited to the station by the station that is organizing the, the debate. So if I were to be one of the candidates, I will jump at it because it will give me an ample opportunity for me to sell my, my manifesto to the electorate that I'm way then to vote for me so far oh dear okay we'll just have to wait until uh, when he comes he but in the meantime yeah i hope you reconnect yeah. um very soon I have, uh, okay. that's why i avoided such debate but somebody is uh, 
actually prepared, they have drawn up a good manifesto that he wants to sell to the electorate. He should jump at it so that he will have opportunity to tell the electorate whatever he has in stock for them. So uh, I think uh, Nigeria should look critically at these candidates. Anyone that is already the debate should, they should know that that person has nothing to offer. Because if he has nothing to offer, he should be able to come out to tell the electorate what he has in stock for them. So I'm using this this media to tell Nigeria that any country, whether as a governor, senator, presidential candidate that have where this free debate, they should not vote for such a person. Because that means it's a signal to the fact that he does not have something to offer Nigeria. That was what happened in 2015 when uh, President Buhari was avoiding debate. He didn't appear in some of the debate. He did, I don't think he even appeared. Today we have seen how the country is. Today the country is at the verge of uh, disintegration, insecurity everywhere, hunger, pains. The, 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 the dollar is, uh, is uh, very high now. It's now exchanging for 850 to a dollar and all that. So this is an opportunity for them to sell themselves. And anyone who refuses to attend such debate, Nigeria should not vote for such a person. He's not capable, he's inept, he, will not, he has nothing to offer. That is why he's shy away, away from uh, debating. Because debate is the apple opportunity for any uh, candidate seeking the vote of the electorate to share themselves, to share their, their manifesto. Okay, okay. Um, no, uh, no debate, no vote. <laughs> that's, that's a summary of what, what Mr. Yeah, yeah, that, is, is no, that should be the, the, the new uh, slogan. No debate, no vote. There's yeah, no vote actually, actually, there's a there hashtag. To offer. Actually, there's a hashtag that has been started on, on Twitter and all that. No debate, no vote and all that. I hope that... Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way. <laughs> okay, well... Just quickly, because our time is running out, Mr. Anya, if you have a, a comment on uh, the new, uh, newly um, unveiled, unveiled Naira notes, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm looking for the word, unveiled mm -hmm. Naira notes, uh, they just, the central bank just changed the Nigerian currency or just redesigned the Nigerian currency, gave it new color and all that. Um, what's your, your take on that? Very briefly, because the time is up. Okay. I don't think Mr. Anya can hear us. Yeah, I would really have wanted to get his perspective on the new Naira notes. Well, Bayo, you're there, and we've really not had this conversation before. How do you feel, or how do you react <laughs> to the uh, newly unveiled Naira notes? Well, um, I think that, personally speaking, and of course, one of my personal views, I think we've been abusing the Naira. Um, I think there are certain aspects of our culture. Well, not even our culture. We can't attribute it to culture. It's, this is an acquired culture mm. where people spray money, people throw money on the ground and start stepping on it, where people use money to stone people. You know, the, oh, I see all kinds of funny and strange things that we do with the, with the Naira. And I wonder if foreigners were to observe us doing these things, whether they would actually, what they would think of us, you know. And this cuts across the educated, uh, the not so enlightened, we all do it. And it's, for me, it's, it should stop. Now, that's, that's on the, uh, you know, cultural, philosophical dimension as to what we do with the Naira. Uh, as to the, the reasons advanced by the central bank uh, for redesigning the, the notes uh, to say that there's a sizable chunk of money outside of the banking system. And they want to capture substantial, if not all of that, back. And I think in the first two weeks, it was reported that 52 billion Naira found its way back into the banking system. So I would say that it's well thought out. If from open sources, the information we are getting adds up, it means it was well thought, thought out. Um, but I think people, some people have expressed worries that the timing may not have been sufficiently good enough because we have this festive season coming uh, and we also have uh, elections following almost immediately afterwards. But if within two weeks, uh, I think now it's been like, what, four weeks since it was announced? Uh, if within the first two weeks, 62 billion naira found its way back into the, into the banking system, I think then they are beginning to actually achieve the reasons for which they know so are redesigned. 
Uh, I would just say that the, the, what, what is important now is to make sure that the transition is smooth. You know, people are able to exchange the old notes for the new notes. There are no bottlenecks. There are no unnecessary queues. And that doesn't constitute another big problem, especially yeah. because of the festive season. Uh, and then, of course, after the festive season, people have to pay school fees for the new year. These are, you know. you know, lots of the questions that, you know, would have loved to answer as we continue this banter on the on newly unveiled Naira Notes. But we, we want to take a quick break. Uh, let's, like, keep it at the back of our <laughs> minds because we're going to have a bit of that conversation when we return. Uh, how does the CBN intend to make sure that some people are not left out? These are questions we've been asking over time. Mm -hmm. we're, but we're going to keep asking until we get the right answers that we need. But we're going on a break now. The news will be up at 12 noon when we return the run-up will continue don't go anywhere stay with us